you don't have to worry about missing out on today's session because I will be having this recorded and I will email it to all of you directly. And with that, we can get on with today's agenda. It's very simple. We're just going to be talking about uh, the purposes of a website. So we're going to kind of cover what are um, the necessities of you having a website. Of course, it's very vague. It depends on the kind of business that you do or whatever it is that you're trying to promote or whatever it is that you're trying to portray online. It's very dependent on that. But we're going to be covering the different types of websites that you can have and what are the purposes that you might need a website for. And so, of course, um, you know, all of these different types of purposes can be met with the Soho Site Site Builder. It's a very easy to use drag and drop website builder with um, tools that really help you get into um, design aspects that may actually require, like usually, um, if you take a look at other website builders, or if you take a look at, you know, having to design a website by yourself, you have to depend on a designer or you may have to depend on, um, you know, somebody who's from a technological background to come and develop and build your website for you. But what we try to do with the Soho Sites Website Builder is enable you to build professional looking websites all by yourself from start to finish. You know, just build it, design it, get it live, all with the click of a button with our drag and drop functionality. So it's very simple to use. So we're just going to kind of cover that and that will be completely covered in the demo. So the demo is a pre-recorded demo, which I'm going to play and it's going to kind of give um, a run through of how you can use these tools to your, um, you know, advantage and build really professional looking websites all by yourself. So getting into the different types of websites, we have um, media websites. So of course, these are websites that kind of um, help you put out a uh, different sorts of multimedia uh, type of content. So this could be in the form of audio, like a podcast, or could be in the form of video. So if you have, if you are, um, you know, a content creator who puts up videos on YouTube, like on a regular basis, we have an integration with YouTube. So you can just um, add these videos to your website itself so we also have an integration with Vimeo if that is um, you know the video provider that you would like to use and you can also um, embed videos from other sources so we have like an embed code where you can um, go and embed uh, videos from other video source providers but we have a direct integration with YouTube and Vimeo so you can upload your videos there and have that uploaded to your website as well we also have an audio element where you can upload like audio files so that can also be done on a regular in a form of like a podcast. So these are the type of um, things that you can do with, uh, you know, the Soho Sites website builder. So if a media website is kind of up your alley, these are the type of tools that you can use to do that. You can also um, have a brochure website. So this is um, the kind of website where you can portray your brand or your service. So these type of websites are more of like a single page portfolio where you can, you know, show the kind of uh, business or whatever service it is that you're into. And and if you're just trying to get that out there and live, um, you know, these are the type of templates that you can choose from. So we provide single page templates that you can choose from in our template library. And then we have the educational and informational websites. So these are the websites where you can provide um, educational uh, services and resources. Or if you are um, of the type of service where you're providing like counseling or therapy um, or, you know, guidance of any sort in that way, you can uh, create those type of very content rich websites as well we also have um, a blogging feature and functionality so you can have a blog where you can put out regular uh, posts you can also invite contributors to come and guest post as well so that can be done also then um, you can also build an e-commerce website so of course this um, is a type of website that you can have so again this is on a general uh, spectrum and when it comes to building e-commerce websites that can't be done with the Zoho sites platform but we do have a solution called Soho Commerce. Um, for those of you who may not know, so this is a total e-commerce solution that enables you to build um, an online store uh, where you can add products and you can add like uh, shipping integrations and you can add payment integrations. So, so you can literally have um, an online store that is you know, created just like how you would create a website and have that up and running and, um, you know, start receiving orders and payments and such. And that can be done also. So for those of you who are interested, I'll be sure to send you the link um, to that platform also. And then you can also create online forums, um, another type of website. And um, 
this is a place where you can have a lot of people come in and interact with each other. Uh, so, you know, this is where you provide like a specific kind of content for a niche group of people where they can come in and add their um, thoughts or their feedback. And so that is like an online community that you can also create, um, you know, if you want to have like a website space for that. And then finally, um, you can have a social media website. So this is where, uh, you know, people can come and they'll have the ability to post and interact with other posts and, uh, you know, the kind of content that's put out there in that way. Uh, similar to the likes of how we have um, social media right now. So these are the different types of websites um, that can be created. Of course, um, the need and the necessity will vary, um, you know, based on whatever your requirement is, but just kind of, as I said, like a broad spectrum categorizing the different types of websites. These are the most common uh, usages for, uh, you know, websites these days. And then here are the five purposes of a website. So of course, again, based on your requirement, the kind of purpose of your website will vary as well. So the main purposes of a website is to collect leads. So, um, you know, to have people come into your website. So of course, when you have a website, you want more people to uh, view the content that you have and interact with it. So the main reason why you put it online is for um, you to get your business visible, you know, to increase your visibility, basically. So when you have people coming in, that is a, you know, collection of leads and a collection of people, uh, you know, coming in and visiting your website. So in order to have that happening, that is one of the purposes. And then also, if you want to build like an email list or like create a community of people. So, um, you know, an integration that we have is with Soho campaigns where you can send um, out regular newsletters to your visitors. So what you can do is you can have this integration into your website um, and people can come in and enter their email IDs and uh, their names, and then you can collect uh, their data and then you can send uh, newsletters to them like on a regular basis so that can be done as well and this will help you create like a community that you regularly interact with also and then um, also if you want to have like booking and scheduling so if you have I'm sorry, there was a little bit of a net connectivity issue. So um, for booking and scheduling, so we have an integration with Soho Bookings and this enables you to um, you know, have that integration where you can have people come in and schedule appointments with you. So if the uh, service that you provide is, um, you know, in a type of way where you would require people to come and schedule an appointment with you or book an appointment with you, that integration is available via Soho Bookings as well. So all of these integrations that I'm mentioning are very easy to, um, you know, enable. All you have to do is drag and drop them. And it's like a one click integration. You don't really have to go into the back end and enter a lot of uh, details. It's just a simple matter of dragging and dropping it. It's on your page. You click publish. It's done. It's that simple. And then we have, um, you know, giving uh, information. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, if you want to provide information to your users, you know, like that would be like one of the, that's actually the main purpose, like the whole idea behind having a website online is to like portray whatever information it is to like send your message of what you do and get that out there online for people to see. And then um, again, as I mentioned before, selling products online. So if you are having like an e-commerce type of business and if that is um, what you are about, then, you know, that would be a purpose of your website, which is to sell products you know, handicrafts, so on and so forth. And so that uh, can be taken care of with the Zoho Commerce uh, solution. So with all of that being said, let's just see how this works. We're going to get into our demo now. And um, definitely while this demo is running, feel free to ask, um, ask any questions that you have, you know, uh, stop us along the way if you need to. And, you know, like, um, uh, just engage with us definitely. So you can uh, drop whatever questions it is that you would like to ask us and we will answer them promptly. So I'll just get this video up and it should be good to go. All right, I'll just have this playing and you can access your Zoho site site builder at zoho.com slash sites and you can access your website builder by clicking on the Access Soho Sites button. Otherwise, if you would like to take a look at the templates that we provide, you can go right ahead by clicking on Templates. This will take you directly into our template 
library where we have a whole bunch of different templates that we provide and they are all um, mobile optimized and they are also um, categorized based on industry. So we have a whole bunch of templates that you can choose from. As you can see here, they are segregated based on uh, use or based on the industry. So if you take a look at architecture and interior, we have different types of templates under that or you can just take a look at all of them over here. And as you can see, once you hover over a template, it'll show you a little preview as to what the template holds. You can also click on the live demo to take a look at how it will appear on different devices, how it will appear on desktop devices, and then how it would appear on tablet and other handheld devices as you can see, and then how it would also appear on mobile devices such as smartphones. And so you can take a look at the template and if you like what you see, you can click on use this template and that'll take you directly into the builder. But for the sake of this demo, there is a website that I have already built. As you can see, here is one using the restaurant template that was right from our template library as well. I've of course just added a few uh, give or take elements for the sake of this demo, but basically it is the same template that you would find in the template library. So as you can see, this is what um, all of our templates look like and so it has a huge banner area which is very useful for you to convey whatever um, message it is which is about the kind of business that you do or what you are about this would be the place to display any graphic or imagery uh, such as that as well as a place where you can put your important content then you can see that the page is separated into various uh, sections so there are various sections that are stacked one up top of the other and each section has elements within it so you have like the heading portion you have um, the paragraph or text area you can also add images and each of them come with their own customizable options each element in each section has its own toolbox so you can go and edit everything um, to the manner that you would like it to appear so as you can see here is a section and within this section we have um, different customization tools that you can use. So once you click on this customization option, the toolbox appears. And so these are the general settings for your section. You can choose from various background types. And so the background type is based on the theme color that you are using. You can also choose the different types of themes you want. And likewise, you can choose to add background images or video. So you can even add videos to your background. And so, um, as you can see here is a demo video that we provide. Of course, you can always add videos that you would like to by just clicking on change video and uploading one from your computer. So this is what you can do with sections. Sections also has other tools so you can just kind of see uh, the different types of tools that we provide and use them according to what your requirement is. Um, sections also has, we have this new feature called the shaper. So this enables you to add various um, patterns to the background of your shapers. So you can choose from the list of um, shaper designs that we have. For instance, if we pull up circles, these are the different types of um, designs that you can add. You can choose um, in circles, we have a lot of other designs to choose from. Let's take this one, for example, and you can always flip so it doesn't have to be in the lower right hand corner. You can flip them to anywhere where you would like them to be. You can also choose to increase or decrease the transparency of them based on your requirement. So what this does is it adds like a different dimension to your design without just having to have um, these boxed up stacks on top of each other. You can also add these type of design elements as well. You can also choose if you would like it to be displayed in your tablet and mobile devices or not. So if you choose for it not to be, it'll be displayed only in the desktop version of your website. And you can also edit the transparency that you would like for it to appear in the smaller devices as well. And again, if you choose to not have your shapers, you can go back and click none. So this is basically the different types of section editing that you can provide for each section. 
Um, and then we have um, a very element specific type of editing options as well. So given the fact that this one is a text element, you will have um, customization options pertaining to that. Given the fact that this one is a heading, you can choose the different types of headings that you want um, based on how you want your website to be viewed on search engines as well. So, you know, it would be it would be good to go with an H1 or an H2 tag if it is an important piece of content that you want to be crawled. And you can also go with alignments and heading styles. And it's very dependent on the different element that you apply likewise for. The button element, you can see that we have different types of customization. So it is very pertaining to that kind of element, the kind of customization options that we provide. So if you wanna take a look at the different types of options for the banner, so the banner works in a different way, of course, it is not like the section. So banners kind of have like slides, so you can add various banners and they'll slide along like a carousel. So this can be one slide along with many others. You can also choose if you want the background to be an image or a video or solid color and also the theme depending on the color that you choose. You can also choose if you want your banner to have like a fixed or a scroll component. So now now it is on scroll, so if you choose fixed, it'll be fixed in one place and you can see how it creates a little bit of a parallax kind of uh, dimensional design. And so to go and add more elements to your page, you can click on this add button right on top over here. And you can choose from the elements that we have provided. Of course, we have the heading, paragraph, image icons, and the likes that you can choose from. There are various different elements that you can add. So for instance, if we take um, the carousel content, you can add that to your page. And within that, you can add another element. For instance, let us just add um, a heading element just for the sake of example. So you can see that the carousel work, it displays your content in a very carousel type of format. So this helps you uh, display if you're trying to display content such as customer feedbacks or testimonials, this would be a way in which you can display your content. It is very um, space friendly. It doesn't take up too much of space on your page. Likewise, we have a lot of different content that you can add um, you know, based on whatever your criteria is, you know, the possibilities are endless. And we also have um, the images that you can add to your page. Of course, it's very standard. Um, you can just choose to upload an image from your desktop to your website. So once you click upload, we have um, automatic optimization. So any image that you add to your website will be optimized automatically. You can also choose to upload it and skip optimization if that is what you require. And apart from uploading images, we also have the image library. So we are integrated with um, Unsplash, Pixabay and Google. And so these are the top leading stock image providers and you can just go right ahead and enter whatever keyword it is for the sake of this restaurant template, we will choose, um, let's just say food. And so you have a whole bunch of images that appear. So this really makes your website look really eye catching. So you can just go ahead and choose whatever it is. And of course, now because this image is added to your website, you can uh, choose the way you want it to appear, we can make this a little smaller. So let's just put this as medium, you can choose how you want to align it, provide um, alt text, different types of styles to the image. As you can see, you can also go so far as to um, edit the spacing in between. And so this is basically how you can add images either from your computer or by using our stock image integrations. Next, we have sections. Of course, like I mentioned before, sections are pretty much the building blocks to your website. So they are stackable portions of the page that you can add one on top of the other. They come they come with various different designs. They also have images and text that you can add to them as well. So apart from what we already provide, you can always take and add more elements to them. So you can choose again here, this is also categorized based on usage. So these are the sections that have more imagery on them. So you can always just scroll through and choose whatever it is that you would like to add. So we can just take this section for instance 
and you can see how that just kind of seamlessly fits into your website. You can always go and add more elements within by just simply taking them and dragging and dropping them into that section. As you can see here, it is very simple and easy to do. Apart from adding these section content pieces into your website, you can also add um, sections such as newsletters. So now this newsletter section will allow your visitors to come and subscribe to your newsletter by entering their email addresses and such. And you can also choose um, which newsletter provider you would like to integrate with. So we have an integration with Zoho Campaigns. We also have an integration with MailChimp. And you can also choose um, the labels for your email. You know, if you want to um, have only the email or if you want to have the name and email, you can also change the way the labeling is given as well as the button. Um, if you want them to subscribe or sign up or whatever action it is that you would like them to follow, that can be mentioned over here as well. So this would be how you can have a newsletter and you can collect uh, details from your visitors so that you can send them email follow-ups or whatever it is that you need. Apart from that, we also have the map section. So this is our integration with Google Maps. So this comes in handy when you are trying to um, give direction to your visitors if you need them to visit you at a geographical location, if you have um, your firm or your service set up in a certain geographic location and you want to point that out, you can do so using the Google Map integration. It's as simple as adding the map to your page and then going and toggling with uh, the location that you would like to set. So basically, this is how you would go about building your page by just adding and dropping elements. It's very simple to do. If there are any elements that you do not like, you can always click and then click on the delete icon and that would just remove it right off your website. And then if there are elements that you would like to duplicate, you can just click on that and then duplicate it or you could just um, you know, clone it to add it to another page. So that is basically how you can go about doing that. As you can see here, we're just clicking on this element. You can choose to copy it. And then once you copy it, you can just paste it. So you can see it just kind of duplicates itself. So these are the ways in which you can go about uh, adding and creating content in your site. Again, you can also delete it if you do not want it. So that's basically how you can uh, use the site builder and build your pages. Apart from dragging and dropping elements and sections onto your page, we also have um, a tool called a visual editor that helps you further customize the way your website looks and operates. And so the visual editor allows you to add even more intricate uh, design options to your website, which are mostly design options that can only be done with the help of a developer or a designer that you can't really do on your own. But we provide you with the options of doing so with just the click of a button. So here we have presets so you can choose the color scheme of your website. And if you would like, you can even go in and add your own custom values for each color by just um, choosing it from the color picker or if you have the hex value for it, you can go for that. You can also choose um, the opacity of the color and add that. And you can see that it gets applied instantly. And so you can preview and see how that operates. And so um, it has been added. You can see it over here in this area. And then we also have the header layout. So over here, you can choose how you want the header to be displayed. And of course, every change that you make will be applied here for you to preview. And at the end of it, if you like the changes, you can continue uh, by applying them or you can also um, you know, reset it to the default design that you had uh, prior to coming into the visual editor. So you can always make changes and you don't have to worry about committing to the change that you have made. So we have different top bar themes and heading themes. And even for your navigation, you can choose the color scheme that you want. So now you see that we have the transparent header while you scroll. You can also choose to have it fixed so that it doesn't have to follow um, as you scroll. We'll just give it a minute to load there. So now you can see that the header does not follow you as you scroll, but then 
when we had it on transparent, it was able to follow us as we were scrolling. So this would be useful for customers when they go all the way to the bottom of the page. You don't want them to have to scroll up every time. So this is just a matter of convenience. You can also choose if you want the logo of your website to be displayed in your mobile version, as well as the site title and other mobile um, customizations are available as well. Then we also have the banner layout. You can choose how you want it to appear. Right now, the banner is on full screen. You can also choose for it to be boxed or full width. Again, that is just according to your preference of how you want it to look. So here's a quick preview on how that would appear. And apart from that, we also have the blog list and blog post layouts. And so these layouts will kind of determine the way your blog page operates. And so you can choose how you want the listings of your posts in your blog to be displayed by choosing from one of the templates over here. You can also choose how you want each individual post to appear as well. So once you are done with your customizations, you can choose to either save or reset. And so that will be applied to your template instantly. We've taken a look at how to add sections and elements and also how to customize them uh, using the customization tools as well as the visual editor. We'll move on to how you can add pages. So here's where you can go to if you want to add another page to your website. And so you can enter a page name, for instance, we'll just call this one menu. And you can see how the page URL appears instantly. And um, it seems to be that we already have a menu page. So this one comes with hyphen one. You can also choose if you want to set this page as a home page. Um, we have an area where you can add a social preview image. So when this page is shared on social media, this would be the place where you would add the image that would go along with it. You can also choose if you want to show the hero banner on this page or not. So if you have the hero banner attached on this page, you can choose to have it only for this page or for every page and not this page. So this allows you to do those type of customizations. Same goes for adding a menu or adding a sidebar. You can choose if you want those to be on specific pages or all pages according to your requirement. We also have the basic page SEO settings where you would add the title as well as relevant keywords and description. And these are all the tools that you can toggle with with SEO that would really help uh, with search engines or robots to crawl this page and check its relevancy for it to be ranked on the Google search engine. So once you are done, um, entering all of these details, you can click add and the new page will be created. As you can see, this is the new page that we have over here. And again, this page can be further populated by going in and choosing certain uh, sections that you can add to the page, as you can see. So we can take this section, for instance, and you can just simply drag and drop that onto your page to build up on it. So it's basically how you would build any page on your website. And once you get into the page settings, you can see the new page that we added just now. So you can choose to um, edit your page info by clicking over here. And this you can also view the different versions of your page. So for instance, if we take the home page, we can see the various versions of this page that were created. So this is the current version that we have now. You can always go back and take a look at the other changes that you have done. So once you click on that version, that will be the version that will appear over here. As you can see, there are different imagery. I have, I have a different shaper that is displayed over here. So you can take a look at the version over here on this preview site. And if you like the version that you see, you can choose to restore it as well. So that is basically how you can um, choose the version of your website that you would like to keep. Next, we have the blog page. So this is basically where you make all of your blog posts. And as you can see, this is just an area where you can add um, different types of blogs that you want. You can choose your post preferences over here. And then once you make your 
uh, blog ready. You can choose to set a cover image and you can publish your post or you can save a draft and it will go live. Um, you can also choose to schedule when you want your post to go live as well. The blog page can also be customized just like how you would any other page on your website by dragging and dropping elements. And so that is um, another page that you can build if it is that you would like to build a blog for your website. This would be the option to do so. And at any point of time while you are creating your website and you would like to change the template or if you're not happy with the template design that you have chosen or if it's not really building up to what you expected it to be, you can always go into settings and change the template that you have and you don't have to worry about losing any of your content because all of your content will remain intact even if you go and choose a different template. You can go click on templates under settings and you can choose to browse the templates. Again, here are all the templates that we provide. So you can choose whichever suits your requirement. This is the one that we are using right now. It says installed as you can see. So let's say we want to change it to this coffee shop template. You can see how this template has been applied. So you can see that the theme colors and everything have changed from the darker theme that we had before. It is now following the theme of that template. You can see that the font of the content has also changed as well. So that is also part of that particular template, as you can see. So once you are done and happy with your website, you can choose to preview it. Again, this will just give you a quick preview of how your website will appear on the different devices. So this would be like the desktop view of the website as well as the tablet view. And you can see that in the tablet view, we have everything that we had put before. So you can see in the tablet view, this is how it appears. And then we have the mobile view. And once you are happy with this change, you can definitely go and publish your website. So when it comes down to publishing your website, there are three specifics um, that you have to keep in mind. So uh, one thing is if you already own a domain, you can map that to your Zoho site's website. So if you already own a domain, you can use the same domain for your, uh, for your Zoho site's website. Apart from that, you can also choose to purchase a domain. So it will take you to a domain provider and you can purchase one if you don't already have one. Or you can use the Zoho site subdomain, which would be the name of your website also followed by .sohosites.com, so that would be the subdomain that you can use. And so once your site has been published, you can take a look at how it would be live. So this is your live version of your website, just like how it showed in the preview, just like how you had built. And of course, as you can see over here, we have the logo and the fave icon. So at any point of time, if you would like to update those as well, I'll just take you into the builder real quick to show you how you can do that. So we'll just go into settings and you can see that there is the logo and fave icon option. So you can choose to change the logo and change the fave icon. So the fave icon is very important because it shows a representation of your website. So as you can see from all the tabs I have open, you, ha you know what the YouTube fave icon is. And then we have the Zoho site site builder. So this would also be indicative of your website. It would help you create like a really good brand referencing with your website visitors. And so this is basically how you would go about building your website using all of these uh, tools that we provide. And I really hope that all of you found this demo very um, informative and, and I hope all of you were able to learn or understand something that you probably did not know or were not aware of before. Thank you. So I hope that that demo was informative and maybe, um, you know, for those of you who have tried the product out, maybe there were some features that you didn't know the full functionality of. So maybe that 
um, you know, help bring some insight as to how you can go about using those features. And so I hope that all in all, like um, all of you have learned something new via this demo or maybe, you know, it got you thinking like, okay, these are a few more things that I could probably add to my website or maybe this is what's missing. So the whole idea behind this is to, you know, show you the different types of functionalities and capabilities that uh, the Soho Site Site Builder helps you accomplish and also how you can go about doing so. So I hope that all in all, um, all of you were really able to uh, pick up something or take something away from that demo. So now we will move on to the final section of our um, of our presentation today, which is uh, the Q and A section. So now we're going to have like an open. Uh, floor where we're going to have the Q&A. So Priyal, if you can just help me out by, you know, bringing um, the questions forward so that you can answer them. Yes, Christine, we, we do have a question from Kart. Okay. Uh, what sorts of protections does the builder have against hacks such as SEO, malware, brute force, spam bot responses on black blog posts, etc.? Okay, so um, we have, um, so there are so what happens is with SEO, we do provide like, um, there is a lot of standardization, of course, what we do with our website builder. As soon as the GDPR had come about, we had um, made our website builder very GDPR compliant. So even when it comes to um, collecting information from your visitors or, you know, giving out information, we make sure that, you know, there are uh, terms that have to be followed. So it's not so easy to be hacked. And even when it comes down to SEO, we make sure that all of the SEO uh, tools and the SEO that we provide is like, Within the builder itself so you need not really integrate with um, anything outside of the builder which could you know of course when you're integrating with third-party services you don't really know what malware that could bring about so we make sure that uh, we have all of those things in check and also when it comes down to um, your responses on your blog post all of your responses can be moderated so whenever you have a new response on your blog post there is like the dashboard in the back end in the builder itself where you can view which uh, comments you want to approve and which ones you want to. And so we also provide settings where um, you can go and toggle with the filter so you can kind of um, choose which ones you want to mark as spam or, you know, so all of these type of um, functionalities are there. Of course, you can just go give it a look. Uh, we have it in the settings option right there in the builder so you can get into all of the settings and um, you'll have a clear idea of uh, how we have all of this set up uh, so as to avoid such situations coming to. I hope that answers your question. We have um, a question from Jorge. I hope I'm answering your, um, I mean, yeah, I hope that I am pronouncing your name correctly. I'm sorry, were you coming to say something, Priyal? Yeah, I mean, I was just pointing out, uh, we have two questions. Right, okay. Yeah, bring it forward, tell me. Uh, yeah, so what kind of integration do we have with LinkedIn? Yeah, so we do have um, the LinkedIn integration where any post that you make on your website, any kind of content that you provide on your website can be directly, um, you know, put forward into your LinkedIn account as well. So you can share content from your website into your LinkedIn account. And another integration that we have with LinkedIn is that um, it's called social profiles. And so what that um, enables you to do is when visitors visit your website and they click on the LinkedIn icon, on your uh, website, they'll be taken directly to your LinkedIn page. So if you have um, your business up on LinkedIn as well, you can directly take your visitors from your website to your social media account. So I hope that answers your question, Jorge. Um, okay. Are there? Do you yeah. have one more question in the chat window? Um, right. I'm on. How do you handle multi language sites? So, um, Ivan, are you asking if we provide multilingual sites? Is that your question? Um, if you could please clarify, then maybe I'll be able to get you an even more apt or a concise answer. So when you say, how do you handle, are you asking us if we do provide multilingual? Because at the moment we are working on providing multilingual websites, but what we do is we do have websites that you can create in regional languages. So we do provide that if you go to settings, you will find it under the general settings where you can add uh, languages, um, 
yeah, you need to build a multilingual. So right now we don't uh, support multilingual Ivan. We are working on it because this has been a request that has been coming forward quite frequently from our users. So that is a work in progress. Definitely it is in our pipeline and we will be having that rolled out soon. I'll be sure to let you know um, when that comes out. So um, are there any other questions, Priyal, or have we gotten everything? Nothing at the moment. I think we uh, wait for a couple of more um... Yeah, definitely. Uh, Ivan, so the time frame, of course, we have a lot of, um, uh, you know, feature requests and things down the line. So I'm pretty sure that we can see this in maybe a uh, three to four month area is what I think uh, it is. But of course, it could always extend depending on the testing phase and when we get that rolled out. So um, it's not very certain. Of course, we don't know for sure because it all depends on how it's going to be developed and how um, you know that kind of foot stands after testing and everything. So we will definitely, we have um, a page called the What's New page. And so what we do over there is we always make sure that we update all of the newest features of that month and what all we've been working on. So you can keep your eyes out for that. And we will be updating like what features we've rolled out. So you'll be able to know by then. Um, in between, are there any workarounds? Maybe I'll leave Naresh to answer that. We can see if there's any workaround um, that we can do in the meantime for you, Ivan. Or what you can do is you can even uh, email us at marketing at sohosites.com and um, tell us what your requirement is. Maybe we can try to find a solution for you. We can get you in uh, direct contact with our support team and you can let them know what your specific requirement is and we will try to get the answer uh, for you, Ivan, definitely. So maybe you can just drop us an email and um, with your requirement we will definitely get back to you on that already yeah got a couple of more questions definitely tell me yeah so it's george right so he has another question definitely um, uh, is expected to be supported in uh, uh, 2021 um i'm not particularly sure on that one george i don't really know um, so MeWe isn't really that, um, we're not familiar with this, so right now we are in India, so this isn't really a social media tool that we use, but of course we are trying to, um, you know, incorporate all of these type of, uh, social media channels, so we have to take a look at that. Right now, I don't, uh, know if I can say if it's going to be supported in 2021. So um, as Naresh already um, mentioned, you know, we can definitely take this like if it is a very specific requirement and if there are lots of people asking for it, we can make an exception and try to have this, um, you know, done and ready as soon as possible. So uh, we can see what we can do about that. But right now, if it's going to be supported in 2021, I really can't tell. So I apologize for that. Um, Another question from Mike. Um, how do you edit an address for Google Maps? Right, so basically you just have to drag and drop the Google Maps um, uh, section onto your page and then you'll have the toolbox that appears on your right. So what you can do is you can go over there um, and you have the settings. So over there is where you can um, enter the specific location that you would like uh, maps to portray. So you can just find that setting in the pop-up box that will appear on the left as soon as you add the map element to your page, Mike. Um, yeah. Uh, Jeff has a question. Um, do you need LinkedIn Navigator to connect to LinkedIn? No, you don't. You don't need, um, Jeff, you don't have uh, to include any third party provider as such. Again, as I mentioned, all the integrations that we provide with Soho Sites is a direct one click integration. So it's just a matter of you going into your settings and then entering, uh, you know, the URL of your social media account. And then once you click save, it's as good as done. So you don't have to, um, you know, enable LinkedIn Navigator. You can just go and set it up right from your builder and you can just use it directly. So that I hope that answers your question, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, George uh, says, uh, do you know if a movie parlor and rumble um, 
being discussed as future integrations. So I think about it. Yeah, um, to answer your question, George, no, um, right now we haven't really been in discussion about these particular social media. So what we do is like we are trying to see what the requirements are. So now that we see that there is a requirement, we can take this forward to the um, development team and tell them that there, this may be a requirement and see, um, you know, if uh, how feasible this is to get done and, you know, when it can get done. So, of course, we do have like a time frame and we do have um a few uh things that we have in priority that we get done so we can see where we can fit this in depending on the necessity of it so right now of course we haven't really been in the talks of this because um you've only brought up this necessity now so definitely we can take this forward and we can see what we can do with this all right yeah we have another question is there a way to tweak um CSS loading to improve. Uh, um, I th I think Narish has gotten that one, yeah. but we can just read it out loud. So yeah, so what happens is that um we already optimize the speed. So if you compare the speed at which um Zoho sites websites load in comparison to our competition, we have like a very optimized loading time. You can even use external tools to check the loading speed. So we have um made sure that irrespective of the content that you add or how heavy the files are, we make sure that the speed of your site is not compromised in any way. So there um isn't any need to go and add any code or CSS to make sure that your um, site loads quickly because we make sure that we do that from our end itself. So you need not worry about that. Um, I think we don't have any new questions uh, coming in right now. Right. So we'll just keep the portal open for a little longer. So of course, um, you know, if there are any questions that come to mind, do feel free to drop them here and we will answer them right now. In the meantime, I'll also go through, there were quite a few questions that came in during the demo. So maybe I'll take some of the ones that are a little more common, maybe, um, you know, project those so we can discuss that. Um, there was um, an interesting question that came from Mark that said, um, you know, um, if I make a change and discover that I made a mistake, can I roll back to a previous version? So we do provide a feature called page versions, which you can find um, in your page uh, settings. So you click on the pages um, tab that's over there right at the top of your builder and you'll find all your pages and right to uh, the right of it, you will find um, the page versions. And so all the edits that you have made ever since you've added that page to your website will be visible. So, you know, um, it gets saved. And so you can always revert to that version. You can preview what it looks like and then you can apply it. Um, or there is also the undo button. So, you know, like as you're making changes and you realize that you've um, made a mistake, you can always click the undo button or you can always go to like a previous version of that page as well. So that can be done also. So, um, that is an option that we provide. Are there any new questions that have come up? Uh, Christine, uh, we do have a question from Ivan. Uh, yeah. How easy is it to add uh, add ladder on an e-commerce module? Okay, so um, Ivan, if you're asking like, from if you think that the whole situation is that you have to build your website and then add it to the e-commerce platform, that is not the thing at all. So what you do is um, if you're trying to build an e-commerce website, you just visit uh, the Zoho Commerce. Like um, if you could just pull that up, um, Priyal, and put the yeah, yeah. URL for that right here in the chat. And so what this is, is you can just start building your website. Um, it's built using like Zoho sites customization tools. So it will be very easy to use, but it's a whole other platform on its own with its own like pricing and everything. So this is just um, a builder that is specifically meant to build e-commerce online stores. So you can just like get into that and start building. Um, yeah, Priyal has added the um, URL for that. So you can just give that, um, you know, a look and you can check it out and see if that suits your requirement, Ivan. And if you do, you can just start building your e-commerce store like right away. So um, you don't need to really build your site and then later on go through the hassle of like taking that 
into um, you know your e-commerce platform. But then again, if there is a situation where you have spent a lot of time building your website on Soho sites and you don't really want to take all of that into uh, e-commerce and stuff and you don't want to do that again, what you can do is you can add the buy now button. And so you can like... Um, Add that button to your website and then once you click buy now it'll take you into the Zoho commerce platform and people can like go to your store so that's like an integration that can happen as well um yeah anything else for you uh, sham uh his question do you provide website design service um we don't particularly provide but there are like um a few people that we have in-house that would help you so we have like um we have like a tie up with Sabi Works. And so um, Naresh, if you could add, uh, you know, some information on that. So uh, what Sabi Works does is like, they will um, build websites for you at a fee. And so you can definitely get in contact with them. You can tell them what your requirement is and then you can work around, um, you know, whatever the situation may be, you can kind of contact them and then come up with an agreement as to how you would like uh, your website to be done. So we personally from Soho Sites don't, but we do have a tie up with Sabi Works and I think a few other uh, designers who can design uh, websites for you. Um, I'll just wait for Naresh to provide a little more information on that. Um, yeah. Mike has another question. Um, mm -hmm. I find that I have difficulty deleting empty elements uh, where it is where it just says add element, but I can't find the trash icon. Okay, so Mike, how it is is that each um, section is kind of like stacked upon each other. So if you notice when you click on a section, there's like a little drop down. So it would kind of be like you have like a row inside a column, inside a section. And so you have to make sure that you kind of click exactly what it is that you would like to delete. So if you have an empty element, of course, this happens to me as well, where I click on it and then the elements tab opens up. So what you have to do is you just um, click on it and you will see like there will be like a little dot an indicative um you know dotted line like around that element and then as soon as you click on that right at the top there will be um a tiny toolbox where you can either like move clone or delete the element so over there you'll find like a tiny trash icon you can just click on that so um yeah that would be available like as soon as you click on that element even if it's an empty one you can just um try to click on it a little bit towards the side and you can find um the trash icon so I hope that answers your question, Mike. Um, okay, awesome, yes. So we'll just keep the portal open for a little longer. For those of you who are, um, you know, uh, interested in a one-on-one -on -one session. So let's say there are like more niche uh, type of requirements that you have and you would want to get on like a one-on-one -on -one session with our, either with our support or our pre-sales team, if you want like an in-depth, demo or like you know a personalized experience into that uh, you can definitely drop us an email at marketing at sohosense.com and we can get um you know you in contact with our support personnel or our sales personnel and then you can um, contact them and schedule um you know uh, a one-on-one -on -one session at your convenience so that can be done as well so if that is something that you would require if that is something that you would like to do you can definitely email and we will get that done and set up for you um christian asks is it possible to make multi-language websites in the future definitely so that is the whole idea it is in the pipeline right now it has been a, a request that has been coming in quite frequently so we are working towards getting that done christian and that should be um up and running soon it is in the pipeline i'm very sure that it is being developed and worked on right now so we will be getting that ready and as soon as it's ready it will be rolled out and accessible to all of you um please type in the website for design services right i'm just um i'm getting that for you sham just give me a few minutes um okay um Naresh, if you are still with us if you could um all right, here we go. Yep, so here are all of our 
um, providers. So if you would like to get in contact with somebody who could help you professionally design your website, that can be done as well. You can just take a look. It's right here in the chat, Sham. So I hope um, that would help you out. Um, we'll just keep the portal open for a little longer. If there are any other questions, do bring them our way. We'll be more than happy to answer them for you. And as I mentioned before, if you also would like a one-on-one -on -one session, you can definitely drop us an email and we will get that set up for you also. We'll just wait for a little longer. Priyal, you just let me know if there are any questions coming in. Yeah, yes, Christine, certainly. Nothing at the moment. <laughs> yes. So it seems like our questions have kind of come to a halt at the moment. Let's just keep it open and wait for a little while, see if anything pops up. Yes. I'd like to thank all of you for being an amazing um, audience in the meantime, like um, it was very engaging and it's really nice to interact with all of you. So we've been running these webinars on a weekly basis, you know, trying to get the information out there to our newest uh, subscribers and for people who are using our platform for the first time, we really want to be there and, you know, help you out in your website building journey. So it's really nice to hear from all of you and see, um, you know, how much you guys are progressing and how far into it all of you have been getting so it's always really nice to yes thank you Mike definitely so it always is very fulfilling for us when we see um you know how um interactive these sessions are so it's always nice to talk to all of uh, you so thank you Mike and thank you Jeff um so there aren't any questions rolling in at the moment. So I think it's safe to assume that, you know, we're done with the questions for now. So definitely like this doesn't have to be the end of our interaction. You can always uh, contact uh, us at marketing at sohosites.com. Um, myself, Priyal, uh, and we have two other people in the team, Kritika, our manager, Ashish, we're all available over there. And, um, you know, you can definitely directly contact us. Mostly if you uh, email at marketing, I would be like the first to respond. So you can definitely contact us over there. And if there are any questions that you have, um, even after the session is done, and when I send the recordings out to you, if there's anything that you would like to be clarified further, um, you know, never hesitate to drop us an email. We'll be more than happy to help you through it. And so with all of that, I um, would like to wish all of you a good day. And I would like to thank uh, Naresh and Priyal for joining me in the session and helping me out with uh, answering all of the questions. All the both of y'all have been great. And so with that, I would like to um, say, have a good day, all of you. Thank you, Jared. And to my colleagues here in India, I would like to wish you all a good night. And with that being said, I will end the session. Thank you once again.